Here are 15 Lightroom masking tips, tricks and hacks I use daily when editing my landscape images. Let's start with something that will blow your mind. For this image I already worked on the sky, but now I also want to target the reflection of the sky in the water. Right click in the image, go to transform, choose flip vertically. Now go into the masking menu, create a new mask and choose select sky. And just like that you can create a mask for the sky reflecting in the water. Once you're done with the adjustments, just make sure to go back, right clicking on the image, transform and once more hit flip vertical. For tip number two, let me create another sky selection. This is looking pretty solid, but Lightroom struggles a lot with finer details along the edge between the sky and the landscape in the foreground. Sometimes this can look really, really ugly. We can get a more precise selection by clicking on those three dots, then go to intersect mask width and choose select sky. We're basically intersecting the sky selection mask with itself. And this will result in a way more precise edge. And this trick does not only work for sky selections, but every other AI mask you can find in Lightroom. So select subject, select background or select people. Let me give you another example. Here with this bird, let's go create a new mask and choose select subject. This is looking pretty good, but we can make it more precise. Click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose select subject. This will make the mask way more accurate. You can see it right here along the feathers of the bottom part of this bird. For tip number three, let me create a linear gradient coming up from the bottom part. Now I want this linear gradient to be intersected with a sky mask. The longer way to do this is, as I just did before, clicking on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and then select sky. However, there's a quicker way to do that. Click on the mask, hold on the Alt key and you can see we get this intersect button down here. And now we can just click on it and choose select sky. This is much quicker. Yet another cool thing you can do with a sky selection mask is you can quickly create landscape selections. Right now we have the sky selected. However, all you need to do is to check the invert button. And just like that, we have a perfect selection for the landscape in the foreground. Of course, you can combine this technique with the intersect method for more precise masking. For tip number five, let's add some artificial fog to this image. I'm going to create a linear gradient and I'm going to drag up this linear gradient coming up from the bottom of the image and I'm placing it right above the water surface. Of course, right now there is way more selected than needed. So we wanna click on the mask, choose subtract, and again, let's use a linear gradient. I'm going to subtract right here from the bottom to create a natural fog effect and you can already see the overlay looks pretty good. So what we want to do here is to bring up the blacks this lessens the contrast and in turn, it just makes it look like fog. But we can take this even further. Let's go down to the effect sliders and here we can use negative dehaze to make this fog effect stronger. Of course, this does not only work with a linear gradient. You could be using a radial gradient to add more targeted areas of fog, just like this. Just make sure the radial gradient is long and thin to create a natural effect. And again, just bring down the dehaze and bring up the blacks. What we can do as well is to add glow. For that, create a radial gradient. Right here in this image, there is one bright spot. And over this bright spot, we can add some extra glow. So let's drag up this radial gradient like this. I'm going to place the center right on the brightest part. And I'm making sure the radial gradient is overlapping some darker areas so the glow effect becomes more visible. In this case, we have trees on both sides and the foreground at the bottom. So to add this glow effect, again, we are simply going to raise the blacks and again, we can bring down the dehaze. Depending on how strong you want it, you can even bring down the clarity and make it really, really soft. This is a great way to add a targeted autumn glow effect. 
And to make it look even cooler, we can increase the temperature inside of here to make the glow appear to be a lot warmer than the rest of the image. Just like that. Of course, this works really great for sunset images like this. So let me give you another example. Let's create a radial gradient. I'm going to be overlapping the dark landscape in the foreground so the glow effect is visible. And I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image so we get a more natural effect. Let's make it a little bigger. Now I'm going to bring up the blacks. This looks quite good, but we can make it stronger by bringing down the dehaze. And we can even bring down the clarity. To add colors, I'm going to bring up the temperature. And we can even add some more color punch by clicking on this box and introducing a specific color tone to this area. Wonderful. Not only can we add glow to an image using this technique, but we can also add light coming into an image. So let's create another radial gradient. Again, I'm placing it towards the outside of the image, right from where the natural light is coming in. And I'm going to make it long and thin. Also, I want the center to be just above the horizon here. This time, instead of adding blacks, we want to add light. So I'm going to bring up the highlights. And I'm also going to bring up the whites to make this area clearly brighter than the rest of the image. We could even add a little bit of exposure to further make this effect stronger. What about some midtones contrast? Midtones contrast is a great way to add more punch to your images. We can create this by using a luminance range mask. So let's create a new mask and choose luminance range. Here we first need to adjust the luminance range. We want to filter out the darkest blacks and the brightest whites. We can do that using these handles on both sides of the luminance range. On the left we have the blacks which we want to bring down just a little bit. And this in turn means the darkest blacks won't be selected by this mask. We want to do the same for the highlights on the right side. So bring down this point just a little bit to filter out the brightest tones. Just like that. Now this mask has still some very, very harsh edges. How can we change that? We can actually click on these handles on both sides of the luminance range and bring them down. And thus we will further filter out the darkest and brightest tones of the image. Also we are receiving a way softer edge, which in turn makes everything look a little more natural. You can also see this happening when taking a look at the mask overlay on the image. So maybe let's try something like this. For the midtones contrast, I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. Then I want to add punch by bringing down the shadows and maybe the blacks. And at the same time, since of course we want to add contrast, we are going to bring up the highlights and we are going to bring up the whites. So since we have filtered out the darkest and brightest parts, we are pretty much safe in regards of over or under exposure. And this is how we can add some really nice mid-tones contrast to our images using a luminance range mask. For tip number nine, I want to show how we can fix polarization or ugly vignetting towards the edges of the image in the sky. Let's create a new mask and we want to choose a color range mask. Since this color is clearly different than the color in the center, we can safely click right in here. And at first, this might not seem right, but we can use the refine slider to further narrow down the color range. And at this point, you can see how we are filtering out the center part of the sky, which looks nice. So just like that, we have a mask selecting only the ugly parts of the sky. Of course, we need to further adjust this mask. So I'm going to click on it, Choose subtract, choose linear gradient since we want to subtract parts of this mask from the bottom area. And once we have set up this mask, all I'm going to do is to bring up the exposure slightly. I'm also going to bring up the temperature since the colors are off towards the edge of the image. And just like this, we have gotten rid of this ugly polarization slash vignetting effect. Of course, we can also do the opposite and create a polarization effect, which always looks great on landscape images with 
white puffy clouds like this. So let's create a new mask. Choose the color range mask. And then we want to click in the blue part of the sky, just like that. Right away, we get a great mask selecting all the areas we need. If you want, we can again make use of the refine slider, making the selection a little wider or narrow it down further. What I want to do with this mask is to say subtract, choose a linear gradient and take away a part of the mask coming up from the bottom just above the horizon. Because it makes sense that the upper part of the sky will become darker than the part over the horizon. So in order to create this polarization effect, all we need to do is to bring down the exposure as much as we want. And you can see how this makes the sky look so much more dramatic. Another great thing we can do with Lightroom's masking tools is dodging and burning. For this, we want to target certain luminance ranges of the images and make them brighter or darker. So to start this, we're going to create a luminance range mask. With the luminance range mask active, hovering over the image, you will get an eyedropper. With this, you can select the luminance range you want to target. I want to target the highlights of the foreground, so I'm going to click right in here. Doing this, you can see the luminance range change. This selection looks pretty good already, but I don't want to select the sky. So what I'm going to do is to click on the mask, choose subject and choose select sky. Now with the luminance range set up for the highlights, what we can do to dodge them, or in other words, make them brighter is to bring up the whites. Just like this. We could also bring up the exposure. And we can even add some temperature, giving the highlights some more warmth. Just like this. And you can see that's a major difference. Of course, we can do the same with the shadows. So again, let's create a luminance range mask and let's click somewhere in the shadows. I don't necessarily want to target the darkest part, so I'm going to bring up the point for the blacks. Just like with the mid-tones contrast, I'm also going to make the edge a little softer here by bringing this point a little further in. And what I'm doing now to burn this area or make it darker is I'm going to bring down the shadows. And by doing this, we're adding more contrast in a very, very targeted way. For tip number 12, I want to show you a quick and easy way to create an image filling radial gradient. So create a new mask, choose radial gradient, then hold down the control key and double click in the image. This will create a radial mask covering the whole width and height of the image. And for tip number 13, I want to show you for what this is used, because Using a radial gradient like this, we can create custom vignetting. First, we need to invert this radial gradient so the outside is affected. Just hit the invert checkbox. And all we need to do now is to bring down the exposure. And just like that, we created custom vignetting. The great thing about this is we can further adjust this. We could bring down the feather of this radial gradient to make the vignetting effect a little less strong but we can also, of course, further adjust the mask. Let's say we want to subtract parts of the foreground so they won't become as dark, just like this. Or we could even further adjust the radial gradient size, making it a little wider. This will give you way more control than just using Lightroom's vignetting slider. For tip number 14, I recommend stacking multiple masks on top of each other instead of using one single mask on which you have to adjust the sliders in a heavy way. So what I mean by this is I want to make the sky darker. I'm going to use a linear gradient covering the top of the sky. And I want to make it quite dark, so I'm going to bring down the exposure. But instead of using one linear gradient where I bring the exposure down like this, I'm going to be using multiple ones. So on the first linear gradient, I'm just slightly dropping the exposure. Then I'm going to use another linear gradient coming in from a slightly different angle, just like this. And again, I'm slightly bringing down the exposure. Overlapping masks like this will result in a more natural look. So I can keep on going. I'm going to create one more linear gradient for the very top, making it slightly smaller. 
And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure, stacking these effects on top of each other. And finally, if you want to add some more color to the sky, especially for sunrise and sunset shots, what I love to do is to create a sky selection mask. And then we want to use the intersect tool. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, click on intersect, choose a linear gradient. And now what I'm going to do is to drag up this linear gradient just above the horizon where the brightest parts of the sky is. So right around here. I want this particular area to have a warm and very saturated color tone. So with this mask, I can bring up the temperature and add a very specific warm look to the brightest parts of the sky without affecting the top. And this way we can create some nice color balance between cold and warm. This is a very, very useful effect I use a lot. We can again make it even stronger by making use of that color box and just add a very specific color to that part, just like this. Okay, and that's it for the 15 Lightroom masking tips, tricks, and hacks I wanted to show you. I hope this was helpful and interesting. If you have any tips, tricks, or hacks you want to add yourself, let me know in the comments, and thank you so much for watching this video.